Thank you very much for having me here. Um, it's always great to be at a Blender conference. I love to work with Blender and it's, it's a very nice set of tools. And um, I'm founder of Elaspix. Elaspix is a small company in Germany and actually we are doing um, product configurations and we do the configurators that are used to um, configure um, products and um, for this we um, heavily set on Blender. Let me show you two demos before I start with my uh, topic. Um, for example, this is for a customer who sells um, uh, platforms for advertising on um, public uh, transports like buses and um, we have a, we make those kinds of configurators where you can uh, move the, the layer and um, you can see how this layer is then looking on the bus hopefully it should work yeah and um, you can turn around the product you can zoom in and this works very seamlessly and um, this is just uh, my Firefox web browser, so this is Blender in a web browser, so to speak. It is rendering on any device that is able to um, view uh, or render um, um, content from the internet. Um, let's show you another demo that is related to what we have seen in the morning. We have also used the quad bot and here you can have uh, two degrees of freedom for moving around the quad board. And everything is done in near real time, so this is not really real time, but is very close to it. So it, it allows rendering of um, 3D stuff wherever you are in, on any device. So, and um, what I do is um, I'm the uh, CEO, so to speak. Um, I have I know something about any um, discipline that is required to build and run a startup. And um, in the next couple of weeks, we have a large new project, and this is about uh, modeling clothes. So we have to model a lot of clothes. And so I, um, I read a lot of how to model them, and I have watched a lot of tutorials how to make clothes. And what I have learned um, is what I want to show you today. Um, you find a, tran a transcript of my um, tutorial on elaspix.de for those who are connected. Um, this is uh, just a blog article and um, this um, tutorial is separated into four different steps and after each step I provide you a blend file with all the stuff inside that I have compiled here. So if you like to uh, try it on your own, then just um, download the blend file and you can um, you can just start from the step you would like to uh, try out. Okay, um, closes. Um, closes um, are very important for us somehow. Um, there is a saying um, which is uh, fine feathers make fine birds or a clothes makes a man, or in German, Kleider machen Leute. And um, this means um, that um, clothes not only have the function to protect us uh, from the cold, but also express ourselves and show our social status and our profession. Um, so clothes are needed everywhere. And um, there's a lot of um, um, possibilities to create uh, clauses. There are different types of how um, someone can create clauses and three of them I will present today. And um, clauses are used widely um, also uh, made from CGI, um, so to speak, um, made in the computer. Um, for example, in movies, here's a screenshot um, from a program that is called Marvelous Designer. I will go into it shortly at the end of my talk and it shows a uh, clothes that was fabricated for The <coughs> Hobbit. It was a cinema movie that was in cinema, I think, uh, three or four weeks ago or a couple of months ago. 
um, so they um, fabricate closes uh, digitally because they have a lot of seams that they cannot film um, in real so of course they have to uh, create those closes digitally. Um, closes are also used in games. Here's a screenshot from uh, Far Cry. Uh, I think it's version 3. Um, and um, closes do a lot of um, giving the character some kind of um, personality and they make them look real. And um, I think it's um, for all of you who ever played a, a shooter game, um, it would be not that much fun if all the soldiers were naked on the battlefield. So. Um, I think it's it's good that they have clothes, and um, so you can uh, easily um, separate a medic soldier from a bazooka soldier, not only because of his tools, but also because he has different clothes. Okay, another um, place where clothes, CGI created clothes are used is the e-commerce. Um, this is something what we also want to do in the next month, so this is why um, I have uh, looked up every single tutorial on how to make them. Um, you can just um, create an avatar digitally which fits your own personal sizes and then you can try different clothes on it and this is rendered in almost um, real time. Okay, um, in my, to my knowledge there are three different ways of um, or how to um, create clauses. Um, the first one is just to draw <coughs> and paint the clauses onto a body and this is I would call it the second life style because second life um, it was a standard. Um, it is, it is easy to understand um, for people who want to learn how to make their own clauses and they only need a 2D program like GIMP or Photoshop and then they can start drawing their own clothes. Um, what they use is um, an UV unwrap. It's an um, image texture and um, I will um, show them later on also. Um, but I think you can see that the drawn clothes here on the body it's not really realistic because there are no edges that uh, you can perceive here. Um, no shadow, yeah. Um, so this is um, good if you have a person which is far away from the camera then nobody notices that it's just drawn onto the body. But if you go closer then um, you realize, hey, that's not a real clothes. So this brings me to the second type of how clothes are created. And this is a very simple idea behind it, and this is what I also want to cover today in my tutorial. Um, just take a body from a program and then cut out the parts of the body um, which you want to use to make a clause out of it. So you just um, cut out a part of the body and then you manipulate it a bit, and this is what we also, what I will also show you today. And after all, you have uh, something that looks more realistic than the clothes uh, in comparison to the second one style clothes. So this is what I would like to do today. So this is a t-shirt kind of thing um, with, a, um, with an image from uh, the Gdansk, uh, how to say, uh, emblem. I think you are familiar with it, hopefully, if not just take another image so it works for any kind of images. And um, just to uh, finish it, this is the third type um, of how clauses are made is uh, um, it's, it's very realistic type of making clauses. Um, um, let me explain the, it this way. If you create a real clause, for example a t-shirt, um, at first you have two types of Two, two pieces of the t-shirt, a front piece and a back piece. And then you sew with a thread those pieces together at the borders. And this gives the t-shirt. And um, this is completely different from the two approaches that I have uncovered um, um, here. Um, but it's very common in 3D software. For example, uh, Maya or 3ds Max 
um, uh, create clothes this way, and also marvelous designer, which I will go into in the end of my talk. And hopefully, in the near future, Blender will also cover this. Okay. Um, I would like to create this kind of t-shirt here. And um, I need four steps to get it done. The first is um, to cut it out from a body that I get from somewhere. Um, the second is um, do some kind of sculpting. So we have, we have creases here um, and we have to try to uh, yeah, mimic those creases in our digital clothes. The third one is to um, um, use a normal map in order to reduce the render times. Um, those of you who um, prepare clothes or figures or um, uh, um, objects to be used in games know that it's very, um, it's, it's very a, a, a large problem. If you have a very high detailed object, you cannot use it in a game. I think we have heard today that the, um, the render times for a single frame can be up to 50 hours or so. So for a single frame, it's very large. But in games, you cannot uh, have 50 hours per frame. Yeah, you need 50 frames per second. This sounds much better. And um, this is why um, we need to get down the number of polygons if we bring a clause to the game engine and and for this uh, we can use a normal map baking and this is the third step that I will go into today. The fourth step is just um, setting everything up and um, placing the um, image on um, the chest and setting the color and so on and then um, we are done and at the end I will um, briefly go into marvelous designer to show you how um, you can um, compile and, and fabricate clothes in a very professional way. So what I show you now is a tutorial that everybody of you can uh, just do if you want and um, because you do not need any software that you have to buy. It's just open, um, Blender is open, um, I will use uh, Make Human. Um, also, it's, a, it's also open, open software. And um, okay, let's start. So, um, I start from scratch, so I have nothing prepared except two things. And the first thing is uh, um, the image from Gdansk. And the second uh, is an image that shows um, a twine-like um, structure. So if I zoom in, you see that it looks like cotton. And it uh, adds a lot. Um, for the realism of the clauses that I would like to create. It's a seamless image. Excuse me? Seamless. Uh, yes, um, this, yeah, here, <laughs> it is seamless. Yeah. Um, this is a good uh, question. Um, this pattern here is repeated many times, so we have to make it seamless. Um, otherwise, you would see the borders where the pattern um, starts again. And um, Piotr told me that I have enough time so I can show you some things. Um, whenever you have a question, just, just ask. I try to show you how to make it. For example, um, um, if I have a pattern like the Gdansk logo here, I can make it seamless very easily using GIMP. There is um, filters, map, and make seamless and then it makes the pattern seamless and now I could um, place it uh, 100 times in a row and I would not detect where one ends and another starts and this is a great great tool but it's not uh, we do not use it for the weapon uh, the, the image here we use it for the textile structure so at first we need our body and we don't need Blender yet. I start make human. 
MakeHuman is a program that is dedicated to the creation of humanoid body. So, and it has a very nice feature. It is called sensor. So, <laughs> so whenever you have a presentation public, then don't show any nudity. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. You have a lot of um, tools here to to adjust everything um, from the kind of teeth to the arms. How big are the eyes, everything. But I do only one thing. I make it look like a male. Okay, so... Um, I just keep the other setting as they are. Um, if you like, you can spend hours matching all those um, settings to what you want to have. Um, this is enough for me here in Make Human. So now I would like to export it in a format that I can import into Blender. And I go to Files and choose the Wavefront object um, file. And I will just type in the name. Um, I check the subdivide checkbox here to have higher detail during the export and I uncheck eyebrows, eyelashes and all that st stuff I don't need. Okay, <coughs> now I press export. Unfortunately I cannot um, define a directory to which MakeHuman exports a file but MakeHuman is so kind to tell me where he decided uh, to export the file. Thanks. Okay, now we are in Blender. And I have to switch very often between um, the UV layout uh, window settings and the default window settings. So for this reason, I will just um, delete the others. Animation we don't need. And video editing is great, but I don't need it here. Scripting I don't need. Motion tracking is also great, of course. So, very nice. And the first thing what I do is, before I add anything, I save the Blender file. So, please do it whenever you have time, and even if you have not time, save your file. Okay, let's import the human. So, I go to the path where MakeHuman has saved my object file. It's about 8 megabytes. And here is. So, and this is uh, a good material to start from because here I can now decide which parts of texture I would like to uh, to go with and um, I plan to make a t-shirt like uh, clothes so I have to uh, cut out the, the upper body with uh, some parts of the arms and the neck also. So I go into edit mode and to cut out um, the part that I need I just select some edge loops here. We have two at the arms. I should press space so that the selection doesn't get lost. Um, it's too wide. So then we have another edge loop around the neck. And another edge loop directly above the belly button this one here. So now we have 
four edge loops, and this is Ah, okay. I think I will go a bit uh, closer to the body to make it oh shit symmetric. This is very nice now. This is not what I wanted. So okay, yeah, Mac Human um, has created that kind of edge loops here, and you must be a bit careful. Did you select the right ones? So, yeah, okay, this looks good now. So, um, I would like to select all the vertices that are in between those selected edge loops. So, I use the select loop inner region tool. And then I just separate my t-shirt from the rest of the body by pressing P <coughs> for separate selection. And now I can move it to the second layer. And now I have on the layer 2 my t-shirt and on the layer 1 is the rest of the body. Okay. At first, I have to scale up the body a bit because it's, uh, it should not look like as it if, as it if painted onto the body because um, I want real creases, I want shadow and so on. So I use the scale uh, tool, just press S for scaling. And you see that everything is um, scaled um, beginning from the center of those selected nodes. So I only scale it a bit. And then I use another kind of scaling. It's called shrink fatten. Or I can start it with um, alt s. And this scaling works a bit different because it scales along the direction of the individual polygon normals. And this is very nice because then everything stays in place, just gets or zooms out. And this is uh, great. Okay. So the next thing is, um, as you can see, we have different lengths of our t-shirt in front and in the back here. And we have to adjust it because the t-shirt is usually the same length front and back. I select the edge loop and I scale the Z direction to zero. So this means um, all of those vertices that I have selected now will become one um, Z position. Scale S restricts to Z dimension Z and press zero to scale it on the same level. And now I just move it downwards so they uh, look like this now. Okay, my t-shirt has now the same length on each side and this is fine. And what I realize now is that the polys uh, in the back are very large and this is not good for modeling and um, for UV unwrapping. So I have to um, add some detail here and for this I use a loop cut um, control R creates such cuts here and now I have enough uh, material here that I can deal with. Okay, so one more thing before we have finished step one. There is um, very thin material. Um, it has no thickness signa at all. But um, it's very important that the material edges um, look as if they would have a thickness because otherwise it, um, is, not, it is not very realistic. So I select the edge loop. Um, I extrude the edge and scale it a bit towards the center. And now I have a very sharp edge here and I want to smooth it out. And therefore I use the bevel tool 
control B creates a very smooth version of that edge. And I repeat it as the other side, extrude, scale it a bit down and bevel out that edge. Okay, and at the neck I will do the same. Um, I press extrude, I scale it towards the center a bit, then again extrude and move it down. And now we have two edges that are very sharp here and I smooth them out by using the bevel tool, control B and you get very rounded edges. Okay, and now if you compare it um, to, with the body it looks okay, I mean for the 10 minutes that I have spent on this. And this was step one. And um, now we can come to the um, sculpting part. But at first, I save my file. Okay, sculpting is, um, is a very nice tool. I love it. Um, I love to, to sculpt. And um, I use it here very heavily but I don't spend a lot of time on it, so um, you can do a lot of more if you, if you take more time. Um, but at first it's good to have a plan what to uh, sculpt, so how should it look like. And so you need some kind of um, reference photos and um, I've taken two photos here and you see how the folds and the creases are falling. The creases are starting from somewhere where it is very tight. Here is some kind of pressure on the cotton, on the clothes, and then the crease starts very smoothly and they run diagonally towards the floor. And you have three large creases here. So um, this is something what I want to try with uh, the sculpt tool in Blender. And here is a, a female. Here also we have a very strong crease going di diagonally and um, I was also curious how Blender would um, use a close simulation to create such kind of creases here so that I have uh, compiled a small um, simulation which, which helps me to understand how Blender uses um, the close um, simulation and this is what I would like to show you it's just a very short clip. Okay, this is a, a simulation um, where the upper border is pinched. So, and as soon as you pinch it, um, the creases appear. And um, the, the creases here are very um, smooth. So, um, compared to the images from the t shirts, um, where we had very um, sharp creases, those here are very smooth. And if you um, raise the floor, so the um, clothes cannot hang freely out, then the creases start to bend to the side. See you here? Here is some kind of bending to the side. And this is some kind what we should uh, consider if we use sculpting to create a t-shirt. And at the end, if you, um, if you apply pressure on the clothes, I have a tube here that is coming from behind and pressing the clothes um, in my direction, then you can see that the crease starts very smoothly here. It becomes more visible the more it goes uh, downwards. And this is what I also would like to cover in my uh, in my tutorial. Um, but if we are talking about um, the Blender close simulation, I would like to show you a, a very nice clip how the Blender close simulator works. And um, 
in Blender you have you have the clause simulator um, you can find them on the physics buttons and here is it the clause simulator and you have some kind of uh, parameters you can select and um, this small clip I would like to show you right now explains how they work Okay, so this is a very nice um, implementation of the close simulation in Blender, but unfortunately it cannot be used really good to um, simulate real clauses. Um, maybe it will change in the future, but um, right now we have to, um, to use another program if you want to make it really, really professional. Um, if we do not have access to a pro to a program like Marvelous Designer, then we have to make it by our own, and this is what I will now continue to show you here. Okay, um, after the first step, we had created our t-shirt here, and now we want to sculpt it. So this is what um, a closed simulation would usually do in a in program, but we do it now um, uh, manually here and if you have a t-shirt that is a little bit sluggy then you will see that you don't have that bendings here a t-shirt that is sluggy is hanging out directly towards um, the floor so we have to fill um, the area here a bit and um, to make it like a very uh, yeah, a plane that is that is not that has no hills and, and valleys anymore because the t-shirt is just hanging below and it's hanging down, downwards. And um, for this I go to the sculpt, I go into the sculpt mode and I use the inflate tool. The inflate tool um, moves the, the plane polygons along the normals. It is somehow similar um, to the tool that I have shown you um, some minutes ago. So I just start to paint to make the person a little bit uh, thicker. So after a very large meal you have a large belly and this is what I want to do here. So 
So, and the waistband is also very important because the cloth hangs freely down Okay, so now I go to the polish tool and I will press everything a little bit so that is very flat and this is what the polish tool is doing I make the front very flat yeah yeah you see now it's very it's very uh, even here so on um, the hills are gone okay this was the first uh, thing that I would, would like to do um, the next is I have to make a plan um, where I would like to add some more creases and um, for this um, it's good to use a grease pencil because a grease pencil can support me just to um, lay out the creases where I want to add them. So I want to add a crease that is starting from the chest here and is going diagonally and another one and maybe some smaller ones here in between. I also want some creases at the armpit because any t-shirt has creases here. You can watch your neighbor, you will find a lot of creases around the armpits and you will cover this also here in the simulated clothes. Also the other side, I would like to add some creases here. And at the back, um, I will add some parallel creases, some smaller ones. So this is now uh, a kind of uh, navigation for me in the sculpt mode where I would like to add more creases. Okay, then I switch to the crease tool. The crease tool is a tool that um, is perfectly suited to create creases. And I start with the front creases. I have set the modus here to add. So what happens now is that the material is uh, pushing out. So it comes towards me um, it is pushed out and um, while it is pushed out it is also pinched so it, it, it comes together and this creates a very sharp crease and this is exactly what I would like to see here. So, But be, uh, before we start I would like to add some more details here because the polygons are very large here it would not make so much fun to use sculpting with very large polygons because you cannot see it uh, correctly. So um, what I do is I will add a modifier and this modifier will give you some more detail and I use a multi-resolution modifier and I subdivide it two times and maybe you can see it, the polys are now very small and this makes um, sculpting more fun. Okay, let's start with the creases. Um, I will increase the strength of the tool uh, and let's draw the creases here. These are very strong creases, I will reduce them later on make a smaller one okay this was um, um, the, f the, the first three creases at the front I could spend hours uh, on doing creases but um, I think I will just continue with the creases for the armpits here I switch to subtract and now I push um, the material away from me but again it is pinched together so that we have lots of uh, sharp edges in the middle of the crease and at the back I will also add some creases
and also smaller ones. Okay, I will now switch off the grease pencil layer because um, I will go to the smooth tool. The smooth tool will smooth out my creases. If you work with cotton, uh, with, uh, with fabric, then you can see that everything is very smooth um, except uh, the top of the creases. So I will smooth out my creases here a bit. And on the other side. And here I very strongly and, and very often go over the start of the creases because I have seen on the reference photos that the creases starts very slowly from the point where the largest force uh, is put on the clothes. Okay, <coughs> let's check if we have um, done all the creases here. Yeah, it seems to be. Okay, this was um, step number two. We now have created a t-shirt that has some uh, creases and as I said um, normally I would spend hours or even days um, on a really good looking fabric um, so this is um, normally not uh, done in just uh, 20 minutes okay what I will do next um, we come to step number three and as you can, maybe you can read it, the number of vertices <coughs> that I have here in my scene, it's around 100,000 vertices and this is quite a lot. And so many vertices are not good to have uh, them in your game engine because it will slow down your game very heavily. And what you can do is you can take that high resolution model here and you can bake um, the structure, you can bake the normals to a low resolution model and this is what I will like to do now and um, in order to make the bake working I have to add another, um, uh, another step and this is uh, UV unwrapping and this is what I, what I would like to prepare uh, now. Okay for this um, I at first create a copy of my, uh, my uh, t-shirt and I move this copy to layer number three. Um, here I can um, switch off the modifier and I will re rename it so that I can recognize that this is a low resolution model and on layer 2 I still have the high resolution model okay and what I want to do is to UV unwrap the low resolution model and so therefore I go to the um, UV editing part uh, window setting and here I can see the image from MakeHuman, the UV map, the texture map from MakeHuman is here, but I want to create a new one. Um, so, and because I have created new polygons in my model, um, I have to make the UV unwrapping by myself. I cannot use uh, UV unwrap from uh, make human because those polygons have not been there. I have created them. And if I if I just unwrap, then I get very strange results. Um, the problem with this unwrap here is that the polygons that have equally the same roughly the same size have different sizes here in the image and this um, is, a, is a problem 
Um, and you can, I think I can show you what the problem really is. I go into paint mode and I start to paint on the UV map with a pencil of same thickness. So the line has the same thickness and on my um, body the line appears with different thickness and this is a problem because I later on will use um, the image from Gdansk and put it here on the body and so I have to care about this. This is not working very well. If you have different sizes of polygons here in your UV layout then it's, it's not a good thing. Okay, how to do it? I must help Blender a bit because when I press unwrap Blender tries to keep the neighborhood um, connections um, if it unwraps the, um, the, the body mesh to, to a flat uh, plane here. And if I can help Blender with this um, and set a seam then it's easier for Blender to know which parts of the body mesh Blender can split into two different pieces which are then for each own are easier to UV unwrap. And um, I also will use an edge crease, uh, a, a loop, a loop, an edge loop that was um, provided from Make Human here. And you can see it starts here at the back, at the neck and runs downwards and it then goes um, over the belly. And this is an, uh, a seam which um, looks good to me because for me it's very interesting to have this region here in a very good um, shape. So I can place a seam here but I would never accept if the seam would go um, through my um, area of interest. So I mark the selected edge loop as a seam and now I can um, <coughs> use the UV unwrap again. And now Blender has um, created two separate connected uh, meshes here. And I will make a test if no, it's working good enough. Um, and for this test I just go again into paint mode and I will paint, I will erase my, uh, my blue lines here. So, and now I can um, go into texture paint mode and can mark the area of interest. So, this is where I would like to have the logo from Gdansk and I can see, okay, the size of my pencil in my UV layout is approximately the same. So this is a good thing and everything is in one place. So I'm very happy with this um, UV um, layout here. Okay, save the file. So, um, what I do now is um, to prepare some images because in GIMP or in Photoshop I have to prepare uh, my textures and to have some kind of uh, yeah, navigational hints or a landscape I can um, save the image that I have created here, my, my uh, pink line, save as image and I will call it uh, um, logo because it becomes my logo later on. But I will also um, save the UV layout. Um, there's an option, it's called export UV layout and it just writes down all the um, exported and layouted um, edges to an image file 
and I call it UV layout. Okay. Um, for me, it's very important that everything is in place. So before I continue, I will just look if everything is here. Yeah, we have the UV layout and we have the logo uh, marked. Okay. Um, the next thing is that I use the UV layout to bake the normals. Um, normals are very important in the render process um, because the normals tell um, the shader um, how bright a specific plane should be lighted from the light. And I'm still in edit mode and the normals um, are those uh, cyan um, lines here and what I do now is um, to go to my high resolution mesh it has a lot of more polygons than the low resolution mesh and I will write down the normal information to a file so this is called baking so um, I have created a UV layout from my low resolution mesh that's very nice so I can I can use it directly and in the UV editor I create a new image and I call it image normals so this is the image where I want to save the normal information from the high resolution mesh, mesh. and what I, now do, what I now do is to uh, take the high resolution mesh and bake the normals to the low resolution mesh UV layout. So at first I need some additional um, buttons here. Okay. Now I have um, made visible the layer 2 and 3 together so I have both meshes on top of each other the high and the low resolution mesh <coughs> and at first I select the high resolution mesh and then I shift click to the low resolution mesh so the high resolution mesh is called selected and the low resolution mesh is called active and this is what I need here if I go to bake normals then you find a checkbox here and this is exactly what I need um, bake the normals of the selected mesh to the active mesh and if, so, if, it, if I switch it on and start the baking hopefully it will create a nice normal map and yes it's working and now you can see um, some colors here red, green and blue colors and here we have large parts of creases and we have some artifacts here but uh, I think I will not cover this I will just ignore them and um, the colors here um, encode the direction of the normals I think green is for x direction um, red is for x direction a green is for y direction and blue is for z direction and so I have um, baked the direction information of the normals, how they are oriented towards this map here. Okay, this is what I now save, save as image. I save it as a JPEG and um, I call it text normal. Okay. Um, do you have any questions right now in this moment? Okay, then I will go on and um, I'm very curious if my baked normals can add some detail to my low resolution mesh. Um, the difference of the high and the low resolution mesh is um, the high resolution mesh has 
about 100,000 vertices and the low resolution mesh has only 6,000 vertices. Um, but with the normal map baking, I hope that I can recover the look of the high resolution mesh even on the low resolution mesh. Okay, what do I need for this? Um, I have selected my low resolution mesh and I create a new material. I call it material shirt. And then I add an image and I call the texture text normal. <coughs> so um, I open the normal map, uh, text normal. And very important um, is to check the normal map checkbox here on, in the image sampling dialog and to set the mapping to UV because I have layouted the UV map so please use it and I will also um, make Blender use the color information as um, a way to influence the normals of my geometry. So save it and now I would like to see in real time how it looks like. Um, I don't like to render everything um, because it's, uh, it's too slow to check if everything is anything is, is, is wrong and um, for this I will um, switch on GLSL um, shading and I will go to the texture uh, shading mode and everything is dark and everything is dark because I think it's because of the light because there is no light yet here on the layer number three. Light is missing. So I go to layer number one. Here is light. Um, yeah, let's take the sunlight and um, make the sunlight also appear on the layers two and three. So now I have the sun also on layer three and again I try to make it visible and now I can move the sun around and you can see there are uh, creases and they seem to react to the sunlight so my normal map is working although I only have 6000 vertices um, I would now go to my game engine for example the unity game engine and I would check um, the frame uh, rate of my game engine and in case that um, it is uh, too slow then I would reduce the polygons even more but I think it's uh, it's okay here yeah you see the, the light is reacting with the creases and this also the um, the surface of my t-shirt is, is very flat if I switch out the normal map then you can see that everything disappears. No? This is just a fake uh, rough surface here. Okay, so that um, I have um, saved my normals on my low resolution uh, t-shirt, I can go on and uh, bring the logo from, from Glance <coughs> to it. And for this I use GIMP. GIMP is my favorite um, 2D program and um, what I need here is the UV layout okay let's switch it on so okay I take the UV layout that I have prepared import it to GIMP I will also import my drawn uh, what is that? Don't care. I will also import import my uh, drawn uh, markers for the uh, area of interest. And the the next thing that I need is my logo, and I will put it on top. So, and with this three things, I'm, I can uh, compile a very good looking uh, logo, I think. 
I have to bring this logo here um, to this area that I have marked with uh, pink uh, colors and for this I have to scale it down a bit and I have to move it to the correct position maybe it's a bit too large yet so scale it a little bit more so now it's somehow um, on the place where I want to have it and I use a UV layout to make the fine tuning because here I can clearly see the nipples of the person that I have uh, imported from Make Human and I can perfectly place my my drawing at the right position. Okay, now I export this as a transparent texture um, I would like to call it just logo export so and let's check if it works yeah now we have a very empty uh, texture here but with a logo from Gdansk at the right place hopefully okay back in Blender we can use it normal um, that texture now I add another texture and I will load my uh, logo here so it's a bit too uh, it's, it's not on the right place and I think this is because I have not checked that Blender should use my UVs that I have layouted okay I think now it's in the right position so and um, another texture we should use and this is a texture that brings us a kind of um, structure a structure of the cotton where you can see the garment and I have um, created a seamless uh, uh, map here um, by the way I do recommend CG textures if you need a texture of something for example let's look textures for um, fabric then you have a couple of textures to choose from yeah and uh, most of them are seamless already so you don't need the GIMP uh, tool to make them seamless because uh, um, work on textures also is very hard so I have um, sometimes spend uh, hours to prepare a texture um, such that it looks good in Blender. Okay, um, now we have three textures, um, but the last texture, the, um, uh, the twine texture here from the cotton, um, is uh, on top of the others, and I will change this because this is only a black and white texture so I can make this texture affect all the others by using multiply and I will increase the size of the resolution such that the, uh, the structure is a bit smaller here okay and at last I will switch off the specular lights because usually cotton um, does not have a specular light and I will change the color of the diffuse light to something that is uh, yeah, similar to the colors in my uh, Gdansk image here okay and this is I think um, the final result that I have compiled now in the last um, I think 40 minutes but as I said, in each step I would usually spend uh, several hours. So this is just a very short version of what I usually do. And um, you can also um, go back to the steps, for example the normal uh, steps, the sculpting uh, mode. You can go back to the sculpting mode and change creases that uh, don't look uh, good enough for you. Okay. So this is now a t-shirt which has only uh, roughly six 
thousand vertices, I think I could bring it down to about six hundred vertices um, without losing any detail. Um, and, and this is uh, possible because I have baked the normals from the high resolution uh, um, mesh. Very nice. Let's quit Blender now. And I would like at last to uh, show you, if I have five minutes, um, sh uh, some um, yeah, um, shots from a marvelous designer. Um, because this program is dedicated to the creation of fabric. Um, this is just an advertisement uh, video from Marvelous Designer and all those uh, models here are created in Marvelous Designer and also the animation and um, it's very really, uh, nice to, to um, use that program because it's very easy to create realistic looking um, fabric. Okay, we will stop this and just to show you how it works. Unfortunately, this program is not open source. Um, it costs about $200. But I think it won't take long until we have the functions of Marvelous Designer in Blender, I think. <laughs> okay. So, um, Marvelous Designer has two screens. So, I think at first I should delete everything here. Um, Okay, um, we have two screens. The left screen is a 3D view of our model. And the right screen is just uh, some kind of sketch board. And here I can sketch out um, um, the clauses uh, piecewise. So for example, I have two pieces of clothes here. So it's always strange to rotate in different 3D programs if you are used to Blender. So now I can um, roughly place the pieces of claws. One is in the back and the other is in the front. Oh, okay, okay. Um, it looks <laughs> very strange. Um, so, okay, what I knew, uh, do now is to tell Marvelous um, which of the borders of the two pieces uh, shall be connected or sued together. This is how um, you would also uh, create claws in reality. You have your pieces of claws and then you sew it together, um, usually uh, by using a machine. So. Um, I set this information that I would like to bring those inner edges together and the outer edges. And now you see the small red and blue lines here. And those tell us that we have uh, sewed together those two pieces. And of course, um, this won't look very nice. Uh, but um, if I spend uh, more time, then I can create it very astonishing uh, clothes here. So now I can start the simulation and Marvelous then tries to arrange everything and brings those edges together and also um, simulates the claws. And this is how it looks now. And the cool thing is I can uh, interactively rearrange parts of the claws uh, so that uh, it, it's very easy to, to work with it. Uh, okay, so it's not very nice, but uh, I think you got the point. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.